Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. A warm welcome to the celebration of the Holy Eucharist by the Anglican Church in the Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago on this fourth Sunday of Easter. This service is being streamed from the St. Barnabas on the hill church in Pleasantville, San Fernando. The celebrant and preacher is the Venerable our Deacon Emeritus, the Reverend Dr. Steve West, Lector, Lay Minister Mrs. Allison George, and Deacon of the Mass, your humble servant, the Reverend Winston Roberts. We invite you to stay tuned in as we together worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We begin with part three of the introit hymn, 176, that Easter tide with joy was bright. Easter tide with joy was bright, the sun shone out with fairer light. Alleluia, alleluia, when to their longing eyes restored, the glad apostles saw their
Our Mass begins on page 98 with the opening sentence for Easter, and then we continue on page 101 and the pages following. Hallelujah, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Hallelujah. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. for the fourth Sunday of Easter, page 169. That will be followed by the Easter anthem, Christ's or Passover. Let us pray. O God, whose Son, Jesus, is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the own level of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ once raised from the dead, dies no more, Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, 
the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And we sit for the liturgy of the word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, beginning at verse 36. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the upstairs room. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon Etana. The word of the Lord. The gradual psalm, Psalm 23. Revelation to John, chapter 7, beginning at verse 9. I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, 
Who are these robed in white? And where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of water of life. And God will wipe every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The sequence hymn, hymn 664. Shepherd of thy sheep, keep thy them in safety. Keep nothing can thy bow withstand. None can pluck me from thy hand. Loving Savior, thou didst give thy own life that we. Christ according to John. Glory to Christ our Savior. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. 
the gospel of our Lord. Praise the Christ, the Lord. Let us pray. Greater God, we ask you to open our eyes that we may see the Christ in each other and so relate to each other as brothers and sisters. Open our eyes, O God, that we may hear your word and that word would influence our lives. Open our lips that we may speak only that which is pleasing to you, words that build up each other. Open our hearts, O God, that we may experience your grace and that grace would be sufficient for us. For we ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I preach you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Perhaps one of the most comforting images of Jesus is that of the Good Shepherd. And even though we do, we do not belong to an agricultural society, we understand that the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep is a very intimate one. The shepherd knows the sheep, each sheep by name, and they follow his voice. And so, while the Pharisees are saying that Jesus is possessed with a demon, in other words, he is a crazy man, Jesus affirms that they are saying this because they do not believe. They are not listening to his voice and responding to what he is saying. And so Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Of course, if we are disciples of Christ today, if we call ourselves members of the church, members of the body of Christ, then Jesus is speaking to us and about us. My sheep hear my voice. Do we? Do we hear his voice even today? How is Jesus speaking to us today? So many thousand years after the resurrection, after his ascension, while he sits at the right hand of the Father. He speaks to us, of course, in the words of the Bible, the Word of God, the inspired Word of God. And of course, he not only speaks to us through his words recorded in the Gospels, but he speaks to us through the books of history in the Bible, through the books of poetry, through the books of the prophets. He speaks because God speaks. And when Jesus speaks, God speaks. And so he speaks to us in the words of the epistles in the New Testament. And also from that book which we read the second lesson from the Revelation to John. For Jesus has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And when we interact with the Word of God in the Bible, we, and we open ourselves to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, Jesus is able to speak to us. So if we are truly his sheep, we will hear his voice. And not only hear, but we will obey because the shepherd would only be giving guidance and direction to the sheep so that they could be safe, so that they could be following the path and the plan that God has for us. 
So do we hear his voice? Yes. Do we obey what he is saying to us? What he is asking us to do? And remember that whatever Jesus, the, the good shepherd, is asking us to do, he has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit to enable and empower us to do his will, to obey his voice. And so we know that the good shepherd will not direct us to do what is wrong. The good shepherd would only direct us to enable us to fulfill that petition that we pray in the Lord's Prayer, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so as we hear his voice, we are able to discern God's will for us and by God's grace, we are able to do it. Jesus says, I know them. I know them. And he knows us. As we would say, he knows us inside out because he was the word that was there at the beginning of creation. And he continues to be involved in the whole process of creation. And so Jesus knows each of us individually. He knows us by name. He knows our strengths. He knows our weaknesses. He knows the gifts that we have been given by the Holy Spirit because those gifts have been given to enable us to fulfill God's plan and God's purpose for our lives. He knows us. And not only that, but in that knowledge, Jesus loves us. And he has demonstrated that love for us. He gave up his divine nature to come into the world as a vulnerable human baby. He went about teaching and preaching and healing so that we could come into a new relationship with God. The children of Israel in the Old Testament would not even call God's name. Because of Christ, we could call God Father. Paul reminds us that we are God's children by adoption and grace. So God desires to have this father-child relationship with us, the same relationship that the Father had with Jesus, the Son. And so we are able to talk to the Father. And he knows us as we prayed. He knows the secrets of our hearts. And so the good shepherd would only give us task that he knows that we are able to do and to fulfill. And he calls us into the church the body of Christ, and he has given us the opportunity to make our contribution to the life of that body. So each of us, all of us, we have a task to perform for God. And we must be about our Heavenly Father's business. And so we need to ask ourselves, am I doing the task that Jesus has set before me? Am I making my contribution to the building up of the body of Christ and to the good of all of God's people? And I, I know, of course, that the shepherd remains faithful to me and my response should be my faithfulness to the shepherd. Because Jesus says, my sheep, Hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Are we following Jesus? Are we committing ourselves daily to deny ourselves, to take up our cross, 
and follow him? Are we striving to be like Jesus, having a relationship with the Father that we renew every morning as we take the time in a quiet place to commune with God? And having done that, are we ready to go out and share, share the good news of the gospel? Are we prepared to love as Jesus loved? Bearing in mind, of course, that Jesus' love was a sacrificial love. He not only gave his time and his gifts, but he gave his life. And while we may not be called to give our lives physically, we are called to give our lives in service, empowered by the Holy Spirit, to give our lives in service to God's people, to respond wherever there is a need, because the Holy Spirit will guide us and empower us to do what we have to do for God. And so if we are to follow Jesus, we have to know him. We have to understand the focus of his ministry while he was on earth and understand that we are called to the same kind of ministry. And if we look at the, the Gospels and we sum up the ministry of Jesus, we can't help but come to two conclusions. And Paul affirms the first for us. He says, Christ has left us a ministry of reconciliation. The focus of Jesus' ministry was bringing people back into a right relationship with God. Those who had sinned, their sins were forgiven. Those who were broken physically, emotionally, and spiritually, they were healed so that they could have a right relationship with themselves, with God, and with others. He was reconciling the world to God. And therefore, if we have to be followers of Jesus, we must accept that ministry of reconciliation. And as we celebrate 150 years as a diocese, we need to remind ourselves that reconciliation is one of our core values. We are called to be a kingdom of priests, and the function of priests is to build bridges between God and the people, and the people and God, and people with each other. And that is the sum total of a ministry of reconciliation. And so we have to see reconciliation as what Jesus desires us to do as we follow him even today. Because there is so much brokenness in our society. There is so much brokenness in our church. There is so much brokenness in our nation. And there is this great need for reconciliation. And so if we are following Jesus, we have to accept that ministry. And we have to understand that the Holy Spirit will be there guiding, enabling, and empowering us as we exercise Christ's ministry of reconciliation in the world. And of course, we are reminded in the Gospel of Matthew that Jesus gave his disciples the great commission. Go into the world and make disciples all nations. The good shepherd desires to expand his flock, to include everyone. He says in, in John 14 that there are others who do not belong to this fold. We must bring them in also 
so that there will be one flock and one shepherd. And that too is our task if we are to follow Jesus. We are called to make disciples of all nations, to share the good news of God's love, to help them to experience God's love through us, to help them to come to know that they too can have the gift of God's Holy Spirit, a spirit of power, a spirit of love, a spirit of self-discipline. And so if we are in this celebration of our 150th anniversary as a diocese and we are affirming our mission, we have to understand that our mission as church is to make disciples for Christ. If we are to be faithful sheep, of the Good Shepherd, then we are called, one, to a ministry of reconciliation, and two, to make disciples. So today, on this fourth Sunday of Easter, we need to reflect on these words of Jesus and come decide whether we are good and faithful sheep of the good shepherd because the good shepherd is faithful and the question is are we he says my sheep hear my voice I know them and they follow me the Lord be with you and so we stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 106. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended, he descended to the, the dead. dead. On, On the, the third, third day, day he rose again. again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the, of the Father. He, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And it is in that faith that we bring our petitions before God as we pray for the peace of the world, as we pray for peace in the hearts of mankind everywhere. As we pray for peace, we lift up the strife to our neighbors of the world where innocent people continue to die as a result of man's inhumanity to man. We pray for peace wherever there's strife. We pray for an end to the war in Ukraine the unrest in Sri Lanka, in Ethiopia, in the Middle East, in Afghanistan. We, as we pray for peace, we lift up those parts of the world where people are suffering as a result of natural disaster. The floods in South Africa, the fires in Europe and the United States, the tornadoes, we pray that relief will come quickly to them and even as they suffer, they would experience the healing power of God's love. We pray for peace in our own nation, peace in our hearts and God's peace in our homes. Lord, in your love. We continue to pray for the church throughout the world and so we lift up Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury as he leads the Worldwide Anglican Communion. In our province, we pray for Howard, our Archbishop. And today, we pray especially for the Diocese of Belize, where Philip Wright is Bishop. In our own diocese, we pray for Claude, our Bishop. And we pray especially for the Bishop and his family as they mourn the passing of his mother. We pray that 
The family will be comforted by their faith and eternal life, their hope. We pray for our retired bishops, Clive Wall and Calvin. We pray for all our clergy. And today we pray especially for the family and relatives of Father Louis Belgrave, who died last week. We pray for their comfort at this time of grief. We pray for all the people of God. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for our country, the president, the prime minister, all members of parliament. We pray for the chief justice and members of the judiciary. We pray for an end to crime and violence in our land, an end to corruption. We pray for unity. We pray for justice. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. We lift up before God all those who are sick and suffering, all who are known to us who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. We pray that today they will experience the healing power of God's love. We pray for the caregivers, for compassion, for dedication, for love. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. And we lift up before God all those who mourn this day, especially those who have lost loved ones as a result of crime and violence in our land, those who have lost loved ones as a result of road accidents, those whose loved ones have died suddenly. We pray that they will receive the comfort of God's Holy Spirit. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. And remember the faithful departed, Anuna, Berkeley, and Louis Belgrave. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and Amen. let light perpetual shine upon them. And may they and all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Be on page 107. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that, that we all may be one. one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your that name you may be glorified by all people. By all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be made faithful ministers of your word and sacrament. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress give to the departed eternal rest that light perpetual shine upon them we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy may we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom let us pray for needs and those of others And so we say together, Almighty God, to whom our, our needs, needs are known, known before we ask, ask. Help, us help us to ask, ask only what accords to your will, will and the, the good, good things which we dare, dare not, or in our blindness, our blindness cannot, cannot ask. ask. Grant, Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our, Lord. our Lord. Amen. We turn to the Act of Penitence on page one, two, three. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we take a moment to bring before God our sins, things done and those left undone, all those occasions when we did not hear his voice, when we did not follow him. And so we ask for forgiveness using form A. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we, we have, have sinned, sinned against you and one another in thought, word, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past 
and grant, and grant that, that we may serve, serve you in the newness of life, life. To the glory Amen. of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon, and <coughs> deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The greeting of peace, form A. We are the body of Christ. By the one spirit, we are baptized into one body and have all been made to drink of the one spirit. Let us then pursue the things that make for peace. And build up the common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And we offer each other a sign of peace. The Offertory Hymn 476 We continue with offertory prayer A. To your goodness, Lord, we have this bread and wine to offer the fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. They will become our spiritual food. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own do we give you. Blessed be God forever. Amen. We use the preface for Easter on page 128. And Eucharistic prayer E on page 142. Eucharistic prayer E on page 142, the preface for Easter on page 128. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he had destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us eternal life. Therefore we praise you 
joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Sovereign Lord and Father, to you be glory and praise forever. In your boundless wisdom, you brought creation into being. In your great love, you fashioned us in your image. In your tender compassion, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, to share our human nature. In the power of the Holy Spirit, you overcame the power of sin and death and brought your people to new birth as first fruits of your new creation. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to the command of your dearly beloved Son, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming. And we offer you, Father, a sacrifice of thanks and praise. Send your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, our Lord and Redeemer. As we partake of this holy food of new and unending life, may your Holy Spirit establish us as a royal priesthood with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Barnabas, and all your sons and daughters who share in your eternal inheritance through Jesus Christ, our Lord. With him, and in him, and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise, blessing, blessing and, and honor, honor. Glory, Glory and, and power be yours forever, forever and ever. ever. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The first form of the breaking of bread, and the second form of the invitation. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We are many, we are one body, because we all share one bread. The gifts of the gift of God for the people of God. Our souls, Our souls will feast and be satisfied, satisfied and, and we will sing glad songs of praise to him. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeem of the world, give us your peace. The communion hymn 583.
so we thank God for God's blessings. We thank God for the gift of life, for its opportunities for serving God and each other. We thank God for families, our friends, and those who are near and dear to us. Today we thank God especially for the gift of our mothers, those whom God used as instruments of his peace to give us the gift of life. We pray that God will continue to sustain them wherever they are. But above all, we thank God for the gift of God's Son, Jesus the Christ, who says to us, I am the Good Shepherd. My sheep know me, they hear my voice, and they follow me. And we thank God for the gift of the Holy Spirit, empowering us, enabling us, sustaining us, as we strive to be good followers of the Shepherd. And so we pray in thanksgiving on page 148. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the God of peace who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you today and always. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings go. Praise Him all the creatures that we Praise Him all the angelic hosts. Praise all the Son and Holy Ghost. Amen. We thank you for tuning in. It was indeed a pleasure sharing the Word of God with you. And let me also thank our deacon Steve West for the inspiring message from which I am sure we all have benefited. Thanks as well to lay minister Alison George for reading and assisting and to the vestry and parishioners of St. Barnabas Parish for making this service in their building possible. Now, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Our recessional hymn, Go My Children With My Blessing.
My brothers and sisters, let Jesus, the Good Shepherd, be your model and guide in thoughts, action, and every stride. Show love to all, be they big or small. May your every conversation be a revelation and appreciation of Jesus' crucifixion, death, and resurrection. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.